Dingai Fusion Records. Chapter 25 Counterattack. My father suffered terribly from various illnesses that year, Xiang Shu said lightly, if he continued recuperating like that, he could have lived for another three to five years. I've heard that in his old age, Lord Shulu Wen was often troubled by wounds he sustained in the wars. Tuaba Yan remembered. Xiang Shu nodded. After Kajera attended to my father, he left a prescription, legend had it that it was a legendary panacea that could cure all kinds of diseases. Chen Xing almost immediately grasped the main point and uttered in surprise, what did he look like? Wore a mask, Xiang Shu said, that wrapped around his head. He had a kind of odor, a Han man, yet he used a Hu name, and he could walk normally. Chen Xing Xiang Shu, he talked about many things regarding life and death with my father. My father trusted him very much and drank the medication he handed over in the end. Afterwards, he went south, and at midnight seven days later, my father passed away peacefully. Chen Xing frowned slightly, and before he could ask anything, Xiang Shu said, but at noon the next day, his corpse turned. At that time, I didn't know that a drought fiend was a kind of Yao. I personally witnessed him coming back to life and become a living corpse. A chill involuntarily ran down Chen Xing's spine. Fortunately, he had not yet turned into a Yao completely, Xiang Shu said, it was before the elders in our tribe gave him a sky burial. After taking care of this matter, I could never feel rest assured, so I left home and went south to pursue that person's trail. Then on the south bank of Liao River, I discovered that the whole village of Valinu had been turned into living corpses. So that's what had happened, Chen Xing finally knew why Xiang Shu cared so much about the origins of drought fiends. Feng Qinjun said, why don't we assume that this doctor was the mastermind directing my GE from behind the scenes? Xiang Shu nodded. Chen Xing deliberated the situation, that is to say, the earliest drought fiend should have drunk some kind of liquid medicine, then turned after death. Yet it couldn't be that every single one of those hundreds of thousands of living corpses had drank this medicine, otherwise just dispensing the medication alone would tire their opponent to death. In any case, although Xiang Shu's revelation could not solve the emergency before them, it had given them a goal. Tuaba Yan said, Tianke, you mentioned before that we needed to be careful of not getting scratched or bitten when engaging them in a fight, but why? Corpse poison, Chen Xing said, the drought fiends all have corpse poison on them, so we must be very careful. Feng Qinjun asked, what would happen after getting scratched? You'll die. Chen Xing said, the longer a living corpse goes without rotting, the more severe the toxicity of the poison in their body gets. Thousand-year-old drought fiends can even form a miasma with the corpse poison in their bodies, which is often called a corpse miasma in ancient tombs. Xiang Shu suddenly said, those who get poisoned would soon turn into a living corpse as well. Chen Xing didn't know that after the poison entered one's body, it would undergo yet another change, yet Xiang Shu said, I witnessed how the corpse poison within two survivors from the Valinu tribe flared up. A few days later, they were incarnated as drought fiends. That works too. Chen Xing muttered, but in this way, it was a perfect explanation for where the hundreds of thousands of living corpses in the mirror world had come from. Xiang Shu, not only that, the weapons of the shadow warriors and generals are coated in corpse poison as well. We must be very careful. Tuaba Yan's gaze changed at once. He turned his head subconsciously and pressed against his left arm with his right. At that moment, a noise was heard outside. Fujian opened the door and entered without notice. Tuaba Yan and Chen Xing got up, and only Xiang Shu remained sitting. Feng Qinjun didn't know what to do for a moment it wasn't right to stand up, but neither was it right to just remain sitting. Fujian just said to Xiang Shu, our scouts reported back that a large number of what you guys call drought fiends have gushed out of Chang'an city and are currently crossing through the west gate. They are expected to arrive at Afang Palace in half a day. Xiang Shu remained silent. Fujian said, I came just to tell you one thing. 
No matter when you return to Chang'an, you must obtain evidence of Princess King He colluding with the Feng clan. Otherwise, when the Murong family seeks vengeance from you, Zhen won't be able to convince them without evidence in hand. That's it, Zhen's going to get ready for war. Xiang Shu sighed. He casually jabbed his sword into the ground to prop himself up. Fu Jian said coldly, Shula Kong, don't tell me you want to fight Zhen now. Chen Xin wanted to stop him, but Xiang Shu said, dead people can't rebel. Since you can't do it, I'll deal with them for you. Fu Jian said angrily, Murong Chui is currently leading the troops to resist the group of drought fiends heading over from the east. Great Chan Yu, if you behead the generals who are guarding our country before the battle, you'll become the enemy of the entire world. Chen Xin immediately pressed down on the sword on the table. At that moment, an imperial guard rushed over to report and shouted, Your Majesty! A disaster is imminent. There are Yao's in the enclosure on the west bank of Zayahi behind the palace. Everyone got such a huge fright that they got up immediately and hurried to high ground. Fujian just took one glance before he rushed to a turret in the palace. In the distance, a disturbance had occurred in the enclosure set up for people to rest in. The imperial guards guarded at its periphery as they guided the people to flee, as well as wielding weapons to kill the monsters. The corpses had turned. Chen Xing immediately turned around and said to Tuo Yan, get the people out. Don't let anyone else get bitten anymore. Yet Xiang Shu just took one look and said, seal off both banks of Zayahi, and start constructing fortifications. Tuo Yan went to issue the orders and motioned for the other three to wait here. He hurried down the high platform, went to the river bank, and removed his shoulder plates, revealing his strong upper arms. His left upper arm was clearly reflected in the river, the laceration he obtained from the execution ground now had a puplish black color visible to the naked eye. Shortly afterwards, a fire broke out in the distance. Fire arrows flew through the air, kerosene exploded, and Chen Xin was instantly stunned. Fujian. Chen Xin uttered in disbelief and shouted, What are you doing? After a portion of people had left the enclosure, Fujian had actually ordered for people to set fire to the enclosure, burning those who were injured but still alive, and even quite a number of those who had escaped in good condition he had issued orders to burn all of them. The east wind enveloped the fiery flames, swallowing the entire enclosure on one side of Afang Palace. Within an instant, scorching flames soared into the sky, and wails of anguish could be heard everywhere. The army stood on all sides, alert and combat ready as they blocked off all exits of the enclosure. Chen Xin no longer knew how he should evaluate this, but Xiang Shu covered Chen Xin's eyes with one hand. Feng Qinjun started cursing loudly, that bastard. Bastard. Xiang Shu said in a low voice, go, don't waste time. Hold on, I have an idea, but I don't know if it'll work or not, General Tuaba. Chen Xing saw that Tuaba Yan was standing by the river and quickly shouted, We're heading out now. Do you want to join us? Tuaba Yan turned around and went over. Chang'an City, in Viang Palace. Feng Yi had already ascended the large hall and sat on Fujian's dragon, his body encircled by blazing black flames. The black armor general led a group of shadow warriors and stood within Hangong Palace. It was dead silent in the hall. Feng Yi stroked the Sen Luo saber on his knees and murmured, Now, you can get your revenge too. The black armor general took off his helmet, then slowly knelt down on one knee. Feng Yi said in a low, hoarse voice, I've been waiting for this day for far too long. Then he raised his head and looked up at the empty space within the hall, saying aloud, My lord, grace us with your presence. We respectfully await your arrival. However, under the dark, gloomy skies, nothing happened. Mortals are just foolish trash, Feng Yi's lips kept trembling, as if he had been stirred up unwittingly, only your strength can last forever. Chen Xin took the other three along and appeared at the west gate of Chang'an city. The city had already been emptied of its living corpses, 
they had all been released by Feng Yi to charge toward Afang Palace. The long street was deserted. At that moment, they saw Hangong Palace jammed with shadow warriors, and from the looks of it, there were nearly 20,000 of them. Xiang Shu thought about it for a bit, then said, Act separately from here onwards. The four of them had already discussed their plans for later before coming here. Chen Xin nodded. Xiang Shu said, If capture isn't possible, then just kill them directly, there's no need to insist on leaving them alive to talk. After he spoke, Xiang Shu glanced at Feng Qianzhen again without a hint of politeness. Feng Qianzhen understood that Xiang Shu was warning him not to hang on to even the slightest trace of soft-heartedness, so he could only restrain his anger and answer, Don't worry, as long as I can find the Sen Luo Saber, I won't let him off. I'll try my best, Chen Xing said, I'm just afraid he won't even give me a chance to speak and just strike straight away. Xiang Shu said, if you or Feng Qianzhen were to appear alone, he won't do anything right away. Besides, hasn't your luck always been very good? Chen Xing smiled and studied Xiang Shu. Great Chen Yu, you're so smart. Start. Xiang Shu said. Chen Xing held up the yin yang mirror, a black vapor burst out and with a loud blast, sucked Xiang Shu, Tuaba Yan, and Feng Qianzhen into the mirror. Within the mirror, in front of Viang Palace, shattered tiles were scattered everywhere. It was as if an earthquake had struck the outside of Hangong Palace traces of a war were still clearly visible here. I did this. Feng Qianzhen uttered in disbelief. Xiang Shu couldn't be bothered to describe it to Feng Qianzhen. Tuaba Yan was still in Ada's and sighed, this is the mirror world. Xiang Shu pointed at the bronze mirror on one side of Hangong Palace and arranged for two of them to lie in wait. Present World Chang'an, in Viang Palace. Feng Qianyi seemed to be waiting for something. Doubts involuntarily arose in Chen Xing. After all, the Black Armor General did not lead the army in besieging Afang Palace, so it was most likely guarding Feng Qianyi by his side while the vanguard troops that were dispatched were just the lowest leveled ordinary living corpses. An eerie wind blew by. Chen Xing suddenly had a strong sense of insecurity. This was his first time really being apart from Xiang Shu along his journey since reuniting with him. When the two of them were separated by a mirror, it was as if the heart lamp had lost its powers as a magic weapon. Chen Xing took a deep breath, closed his eyes, opened them again, and walked towards Hangong Palace. He saw the hundreds of shadow warriors that were standing on guard outside the palace. When he arrived outside, all of the warriors drew their swords at the same time. Is there a need to be that nervous? Chen Xing raised his voice, Feng Qianyi, I have a few questions for you. After he spoke, Chen Xing extended a hand, and the light of the heart lamp burst out from his palm. That light was incomparably resplendent and instantly illuminated the area outside Hangong Palace. The shadow warriors weren't like low-level living corpses and would not scatter in fear because of this white light, but they were still slightly apprehensive as they retreated a bit. I've given you a chance, Feng Yi said coldly, Chen Xing, you are truly the pinnacle of foolishness. Even right now, you still have the naive delusion of attempting to challenge me with that heart lamp of yours that has no mana at all. Chen Xing walked onto the steps and entered the palace. Shadow warriors with brandished swords stood on all sides and tightly encircled him, as long as Feng Qianyi issued an order, they would be able to hack him into pieces in an instant. I'll give you a chance now too, Chen Xing said, turn back B.A., Feng Qianyi. Let go of your obsession, you can still pull back before it's too late. Feng Qianyi burst out into raucous laughter in an instant. Do you even understand what it means by pulling back before it's too late? He lowered his head and looked down on Chen Xing from above, then enunciated each word carefully. Although Princess King He is a Xianbei, she became destitute and homeless when she was 14 years old. Her entire family had to move to Chang'an, and together with her younger brother who wasn't even 13 years old then, turned into Fujian's toy. They were imprisoned deep in the palace, where they couldn't even see the light of day, 
and were forced to suffer through utmost humiliation. If they had said one wrong word or did one wrong thing, their entire clan would have died without a burial place. That's called obsessions. When your wife gets killed by the Qin State's army in a war, when two of your children get stabbed to death, and when both your legs get crushed by carriage wheels such that you turn into a cripple who can only live in a wheelchair for the rest of your life, you had better, by all means, remember what you said today. Then you can act that generously at the expense of others and persuade yourself to pull back before it's too late. To turn around and repent. Chen Xing said lightly, you've forgotten that you're not the only one who lost your home and family. Feng Qinyi was stunned in an instant. Chen Xing smiled and continued, you're even the one who told me the inside story regarding my family's death. Otherwise, I would never have known who was the one who hung my parents for the rest of my life. Feng Qinyi had actually forgotten all about that. He roared angrily, you degenerate descendant of the Chen family. You've never considered taking revenge for your country and family, so you're both disloyal and unfilial how could you have the face to come denounce me? Wake up! Feng Qinyi! Chen Xing suddenly shouted with a resounding voice, how does your method of revenge make you any different from Fujian? How many tragedies have you caused? You inflicted your own suffering on thousands of families in Chang'an City. You're even worse than Fujian. Feng Qinyi laughed maniacally and slowly said, Do you think this is the end? To be born, to grow old, to get sick, and to die are all the most bitter affairs of the world. Death, will never be the end, when my lord descends upon the world, all of the dead will once again live in the human world in another way. Chen Xing's heart jolted those were the words he was waiting for. He finally got it out of him. Who is it? Chen Xing narrowed his eyes. Feng Qinyi raised one hand and slowly pointed to the black armor general in front of him who was guarding the emperor's throne. He mocked, do you still not understand? But then again, you're the only exorcist in this world now. With your insignificant, meager strength, how would you be able to stop the coming of my lord? After he spoke, the black armor general slowly took his helmet off and revealed his handsome face. The atmosphere was dead quiet. Chen Xing, who should have cooperated and shout in surprise, it's you, now calmly said, I'm sorry, I really can't recognize who your lord is. Feng Qinyi turned indignant and shouted, he's not my lord. I just wanted to let you see. Do you know who he is? He's the king of the Central Plains. Nearly a hundred years ago, he was the prince of Zhao in the Jin dynasty Sima Lun. Chen Xing. Chen Xing instantly recalled the prince of the previous dynasty who was revived in Mount Longzhou was the prince of Chu, Sima Wei. How many more have you guys revived? Chen Xing's expression darkened as he asked. Feng Qinyi said slowly, ever since I obtained the yin yang mirror, I have always been waiting for this moment of rebirth. You won't have the chance to witness it anymore after today, in the days to come, the eight princes will be revived one by one. A chill instantly ran down Chen Xing's spine. He took half a step back and heard Feng Qinyi continue, after unifying the divine land, even if the exorcism department were to revive, they would have no way of stopping it, let alone just you. Take him down. Chen Tianke, I'm doing this for your own good. When you obtain this eternal life, you'll understand its benefits. After he spoke, Sima Lun's corpse had already strode toward Chen Xing. Chen Xing kept one hand behind his back, he knew that he would not be able to get anything else out from him anymore, so he spurred the yin-yang mirror, and the resentment that twined around the mirror began to stir. Within an instant, a bright light burst forth from several bronze mirrors within the hall. Xiang Shu, Feng Qinjun, and Tuaba Yan rushed out at the same time. Feng Qinyi had long ago known that Chen Xin coming forward alone was merely a bluff, so he had dispatched warriors in advance to surround the periphery of the palace until not even a drop of water could trickle out. But he had never expected that Chen Xin would actually use the world in the yin yang mirror as a passage to trip him up. Within an instant, Feng Qinjun had taken on Feng Qinyi directly. 
Xiang Shu brandished his sword to take Sima Lun down, while Chen Xing immediately withdrew and hid behind the screen. Tuaba Yan spun around in mid-air, swung his halberd out, and forced back the shadow warriors that had rushed into the hall, then stood guard in front of Chen Xing. Chaos immediately descended upon the hall. There was a limit to how many warriors Hangong Palace could accommodate. Xiang Shu captured a decisive opportunity and with a clang, he struck Sima Lun and sent him flying in an instant. Within the blink of an eye, the two of them had already exchanged several blows. Sima Lun wielded a pitch black long sword, and under Xiang Shu's sword, he was actually being steadily pushed back. Feng Qinjun had already rushed in front of Feng Qinyi. He reached out to clutch at his older brother and harshly threw him down from the throne. Upon seeing this, Chen Xing said, Protect me. Although Tuaba Yan was not as strong as Xiang Shu, he was still a brave military general who could ward off a thousand by himself. He stood guard in front of Chen Xing, and once again pushed back the tide of shadow warriors that flooded in to rescue Feng Qinyi. Chen Xing temporarily shelved the matter of Feng Qinyi aside. He put in all his might to spur the heart lamp, gathered his hands together, and twisted his hands in casting gestures. The white light of the heart lamp grew brighter and brighter, and in the end, the light in Hangong Palace was so glaring that no one could even look straight at it. With Chen Xing's radiant light flooded the hall, all of the shadow warriors were immediately filled with dread. The nine runes on Xiang Shu's huge sword started to light up one by one. In the midst of the glaring light, Feng Qinjun pressed his elder brother down. Feng Qinyi struggled vigorously under the throne and showed a strange smile. Qinjun, you ought, Feng Qinyi spoke with much difficulty. Feng Qinjun roared angrily, why did you kill King He? She's, not dead, as long as you listen to me, Feng Qinyi slowly said, pick up, your saber B.A. I promise you, as long as you listen to me, that wish of yours. Feng Qinjun. Within a split second, Feng Qinyi opened his mouth and gently spit out a mouthful of black fog, which sprayed onto his younger brother's face. Amidst the light, Xiang Shu exerted all the power he had accumulated throughout his life to its utmost retract, strike, and roar. Break. Chen Xing and Xiang Shu shouted at the same time. The heavy sword drew out a fan-shaped light arc and swung out with a momentum that could shatter the heavens. Sima Lun raised his sword to block, but under the glaring light of the heart lamp, his sword broke. Unfortunately, right at the moment the heavy sword struck Sima Lun's breastplate, Chen Xing felt a tight grip around his neck, and he couldn't breathe vines had constricted around his neck and now dragged him to the front of a pillar in the hall. In the next moment, the heavy sword collided with Sima Lun's black breastplate, but because it lost the power of Chen Xing's heart lamp, all it could do was send Sima Lun flying. Sima Lun flipped in midair, then bounced back towards Xiang Shu. His fist made contact with Xiang Shu's chest, which also sent him flying. Tuaba Yan was stunned and knocked Chen Xing away. Another vine curled over from a beam and tied him firmly to the pillar. Xiang Shu was struck right in the area where Chen Xing had helped him connect his fractured rib bones a few days ago. Xiang Shu immediately spat out a mouthful of blood, and his vision went black. Chen Xing lunged towards Xiang Shu and was just about to drag him away when within that brief moment, thorny vines broke out from underneath the ground in the hall and bound the three of them very tightly. Feng Qinjun was bathed in fire with the Senluo saber brandished in front of him. He stood guard in front of Feng Qinyi with bloodshot eyes. Feng Qinyi was calm and unruffled as he climbed up onto the emperor's throne and sat down again. He slowly said, Great exorcist, if this were before silence had fallen on all magic, we could still have a proper fight. It's a pity that the spiritual chi of heaven and earth is now lost. If you intend to rely solely on that spark in your hand, you should just be resigned to your unfortunate fate B.A. Chen Xing and Xiang Shu were tied together on a pillar. Xiang Shu exerted his utmost to struggle against the vines, but neither of them could break free. Most of Chen Xing's body was tied onto Xiang Shu's, the more it sunk in, the deeper it got. The vine kept tightening, 
and even soft cracking noises could be heard from the pillar. Chen Xing. Xiang Xu was still resisting arduously, and no one knew where the huge sword he was wielding had gone to. Chen Xing's whole body was pressed against his front. Xiang Xu turned his arm around to protect Chen Xing. The vines were moving slowly and began to strangle them even tighter. Chen Xing, what should we do? Xiang Xu, think of a way to wake him up. Xiang Xu let out a breath first, then sucked in with all his might as he tried to break the vines apart, but the vines only grew harder. Chen Xing felt like his body was about to burst from the strangling and said in intermittent gasps, Feng, Daij, wake up. Feng Qinjun remained unmoved, his eyes still thoroughly bloodshot. Tuaba Yan's neck was being strangled. His eyes were wide open as he gripped the vines and kept trying to pull them away. Feng Qinyi said slowly, that's all for today, everyone. What about, your luck? Xiang Xu grit his teeth and barely held on. At this moment, the thorny vines were covered with barbs and had broken through their upper outer garments, piercing into Xiang Xu's back and arms. Once the barbs drew back, he was immediately dripping with blood. Following which, the vines brushed past Chen Xing's shoulder, and dark red blood gushed out. You're actually, actually, at this kind of timing, Chen Xing was about to go mad. He didn't know where he drew the strength from to chide angrily, you're actually hard. You're actually hard at this kind of timing. Tell me how you managed to get hard. Xiang Xu. It was as if the feeling of blood intertwined with their warm bodies had awakened an innate bloodthirsty tendency in Xiang Xu, which immediately made his blood boil, and his entire body inevitably react. Shut up. Xiang Xu was making his final preparations before breaking free, but once he tried to breathe in a little, the old wound around his ribs would throb sharply. End chapter. Dingai Fusion Records. Chapter 26. Journey Home. Let them suffer a little more, Feng Qinyi slowly said, they'll be getting away too easily if they die with just one stab. Chen Xing almost couldn't breathe. Xiang Xu struggled to fight back and protected Chen Xing in his arms, as the vine sliced through his skin, blood would start gushing out of his fresh wounds one by one and began getting absorbed by the vines. Chen Xing cried out in pain. That blood mixed with Xiang Xu's, and the two of them were dripping with blood that smeared all over the vines. Yet for some reason, when the blood on Xiang Xu's body and Chen Xing's blood mixed together, it was as if the heart lamp sensed it at once it exerted a power hundreds of times stronger from his chest and burst out. Xiang Xu shouted fiercely, while Chen Xing just felt like he was going to get crushed to death, yet he heard a loud snap next to his ears. Two pillars broke at the same time, and the entire Hangong Palace collapsed with a loud rumble. Beams, wooden pillars, along with the tiles in the halls, and all the brick walls were collapsing from being pulled on crazily by those vines. In the next moment, from within the ruins, the giant pillars in Hangong Palace were lifted up. Sima Lun struggled out from underneath a pile of tiles, but Xiang Xu's entire body was already enveloped in the intense light of the heart lamp. His attire that had been black from head to toe instantly transformed into a snow-white, gilded martial robe. Rays of golden light were bursting out of his heavy iron sword the light was revolving around the sword from its handle to its tip, turning it into a golden sword. Xiang Xu opened his eyes. Get lost, go reincarnate. Xiang Xu said coldly. The protector martial god appeared. Chen Xin was thoroughly stunned when he crawled out of the heap of broken tiles. He had only seen it before recorded in book, and thought that the so-called Protector Martial God was merely a name, but he didn't expect it to actually be a description. Then Xiang Xu wielded his sword in both hands and launched a move that crumbled the heavens. Sima Lun's armor instantly shattered, and he unleashed a mad roar his entire body was being burned by the scorching flames bursting out of Xiang Xu's golden sword until there was almost nothing left of it. I'm finally free, thank you a low voice uttered as the corpse disintegrated into ashes and scattered into the air. You, you, Chen Xing was instantly overjoyed and asked, what happened? 
What just happened? I don't know. Xian Shu had already returned to normal, and he roared madly at Chen Xing, save the people first. The effects of being a martial god lasted only for a brief moment, following which, no matter how Chen Xing spurred the heart lamp, he could no longer trigger any changes for him. Shadow warriors flocked over in throngs from all sides, Xiang Shu rushed towards the center of Hangong Palace's ruins, but millions of vines and thorns shot out from within the fallen bricks. Feng Qinjun's vines pushed against the roof of the palace, and blood was flowing down the corners of his mouth. The heavy sword in Xiang Shu's hand shone. He had wanted to rush forth several times, but he could never breach Feng Qinjun's defense. Chen Xing dragged Tuaba Yan out from the other side of the collapsed ruins. Fortunately, Tuaba Yan was clad in armor so the injuries he suffered weren't too severe, and the thorns from before did not leave behind too many lacerations on his body. Wake up! Chen Xing cried anxiously. He held up the heart lamp with one hand and pressed it against Tuaba Yan's forehead. Tuaba Yan suddenly woke up, and the first thing he did was hug Chen Xing and roll over on the spot to avoid the shadow warriors who had rushed over at the same time from behind Chen Xing. We need to restrain him. Tuaba Yan glanced at Feng Qinjun. Tuaba Yan picked up his halberd. Chen Xing said, take me over while Xiang Shu distracts him. Tuaba Yan took Chen Xing along with him, he wielded his halberd in one hand and began charging through the group of warriors and closed in on the center of Hangong Palace. Xiang Shu's field of vision were only filled with vines, he was afraid of getting entangled by Feng Qinjun again, so he could only watch out for an opportunity and broke free. He had just secured a retreat when Tuaba Yan rushed over. Go up. Xiang Shu flipped over in the air and pushed Chen Xing up. Tuaba Yan drew near, avoided the vines, took half a step back, and swung his halberd out horizontally to give Chen Xing a boost. Chen Xing leveraged the momentum to go higher in a few steps, emitted an intense light from his palm, lifted his elbow, and slapped his palm on Feng Qinjun's face. Expel. Chen Xing's voice rang out like the morning bells and evening drums. The light from the heart lamp quickly invaded Feng Qinjun's body, and the resentment within dissipated with a blast. Feng Qinjun stumbled from Chen Xing's slap, his eyes' lucidity restored. All of the vines disappeared. Tuaba Yan and Xiang Shu immediately turned around to resist the shadow warriors that had rushed forth. Tens of thousands of shadow warriors who were guarding Viang Palace gushed over like a tsunami. Feng Qinjun was still standing, gasping for breath. Where's your elder brother? Chen Xing shouted, capture him. Quick. We've already won. Another round of mad laughter burst out from within the ruins. Far, far from it Feng Qinyi's sinister voice said, the blood array was not completed, so I won't hold on to any more hope today. Exorcist, you will see my lord one day, and the entire divine land will submit to him when the time comes. Feng Qinyi gradually rose from the ruins. It was as if his entire body had undergone a metamorphosis purplish black blood began trickling down from his eyes. Feng Qinjun looked up and shouted in sorrow, Stop! Gig! Tuaba Yan shouted, Can't hold them back anymore. Think of something. Feng Qinjun wielded the Sen Luo saber at a slanted angle. With a cry full of grief, black flames burst out from his whole body once again, then all of the trees in Viang Palace, and even Chang'an City, were uprooted and turned into pitch black withered trees that rushed toward Hangong Palace. Xiang Shu was taken aback, he had just turned back to look when Chen Xing said, he has regained his rationality. Feng Qinjun seemed to be able to control his Sen Luo Wang Xiang that had been refined with resentment. The area in front of Viang Palace turned into a battlefield for withered tree men and shadow warriors, and the pressure on the other three lightened in an instant. You deserve to be part of the Feng family, Feng Qinyi hovered in mid-air and said lightly, a day will come when you will offer the saber to my lord. Stop, please. Feng Qinjun shouted. Indignation could be seen in Feng Qinjun's eyes. He let out another mad roar, black flame soared rapidly, 
and vines appeared from beneath the ground that flew towards his older brother in the air. Xiang Shu immediately leaped onto the vines and dashed over on the vines. Chen Xin held up his heart lamp at once. While Xiang Shu had flown into the air, he leaned back, held his sword with both hands, and his body curved into a beautiful arc the massive sword in his hands shone with a resplendent light. Before this, Feng Qinyi closed his eyes and had actually given up resisting. He spread both of his arms out. Xiang Shu swung his sword down, and Feng Qinyi's corporeal body had its tendons torn apart and his bones fractured. The black vapor that protected his body disintegrated because of the light from the heart lamp, and he suddenly fell. All of the shadow warriors in Viang Palace lost the support of their resentment at the same time and got wrangled to death by the tree men. Feng Qinyi fell to the ground like a kite that had its string cut. He let out a muffled sound, his eyes looking up into the sky above. Xiang Shu landed, Feng Qinjun kept his saber, and Tuaba Yan withdrew his halberd. Chen Xing's whole body was throbbing with acute pain, and he was already on the verge of collapse. Feng Qinyi mustered the last of his strength to say, too early, I can only blame myself, for being too anxious. Then all of the resentment throughout Feng Qinyi's body dispersed, his eyes remained wide open as he died just like that. Chen Xing rushed forward to shake Feng Qinyi vigorously and shouted, AI! Don't die! Wake up! He hadn't asked what he needed to yet. Without any evidence in hand, how would they be able to explain themselves when they got back? Tuaba Yan quickly pulled Chen Xing away. Feng Qinjun was still beside them after all. After witnessing his older brother's death, they were afraid that Feng Qinjun would act recklessly and go out of control. Xiang Shu was always on guard against Feng Qinjun. Feng Qinjun returned to normal very soon and sheathed his saber. Your older brother's dead. Chen Xing said to Feng Qinjun. He inspected Feng Qinyi's pupils they were already dilated. Feng Qinjun walked out of Hangong Palace. The first signs of dawn were beginning to seep over the horizon, which illuminated the empty Chang'an. Corpses were strewn all over the huge Viang Palace. After Feng Qinyi died, the armor on the shadow warriors had disintegrated into black vapor and vanished, restoring their original appearance of white bones and rotted flesh. The tree Yao summoned by the Sen Luo saber had twisted the living corpses into fragmented pieces, so broken limbs littered the ground, and the remaining few living corpses that had been snapped in half were still struggling. After escaping Chang'an, another night passed. When dawn broke, on the plain outside Afang Palace, the living corpse army finally made their grand arrival. But as soon as the sun rose, they lost their marching formation for some reason and began wandering around everywhere aimlessly as they searched for food to gnaw on, as if they were wild beasts not under anyone's control. The Great Qin Army swarmed out in full force and stopped in front of Zia He. After igniting their flaming arrows, they immediately released them at random and ignited the living corpses. The army then separated into two groups, outflanking the enemies on both the right and left sides to trap 300,000 living corpses within their encirclement, then drove the corpses towards the central area of the river bank. At that moment, the last batch of people fleeing from Chang'an City mixed in with the group of living corpses. They had to avoid both the living corpses and the stray arrows from the army, so they kept pleading bitterly toward the outside as they begged the Qin army to let them go. Report Fujian was clad in emperor's armor from head to toe and was already waiting on high alert. He knew what the scout wanted to say before he even spoke and said sharply, not even one can be released. Chase anyone who has been bitten or scratched back into the encirclement. Wang Zi and the other civil officials watched the battle at the side. On the east bank of Zaihe, anguished wailing shook the earth, and resentment soared into the sky. There was a dense, dark mass of 300,000 living corpses, their numbers even greater than that of the army, and they were still trying to break through their siege subconsciously. It was truly a magnificent sight. Some soldiers even got bitten while resisting the living corpses, and when they turned to look back in the next moment, 
they were already being driven back into the group of living corpses by their own comrades under Murong Chui's stern command. Within the blink of an eye, living corpses swarmed all over them, tearing them into pieces as they gnawed on the soldiers. Wang Zi said, Your Majesty, it's about time. The encirclement was gradually closing in. All of the living corpses within a 10-mile radius had been driven into the center of a designated location. Under the Afang Palace behind Fujian, across a river, catapults used for besieging a city that were stored in a warehouse were already now in working order. Fujian raised his emperor sword and shouted, Shoot! Amidst the light of dawn, all of the catapults on the opposite side of the river launched an attack. Fire canisters obscured the sky as they flew toward the middle of the encirclement. Kerosene fell onto the ground, resulting in explosions that blew up countless crimson clouds and successfully ignited the living corpse group. A gust of easterly wind blew by, and the fire began spreading rapidly. Throughout a one-mile radius, living corpses that were set on fire were provoked, and they began to frantically push outward. Guard! Guard! All the generals of Great Qin rode their galloping horses. Soldiers held up their shields and guarded the encirclement fiercely, and rows of soldiers surrounded the living corpses to prevent them from breaking through. Raging flames surged, countless figures were set ablaze within the flames as they frantically crashed into everything around them. Bouts of pained howls could be heard, and for a moment, no one could tell if the ones being burned were humans or the Yao's called drought fiends. An involuntary chill coated people's hearts. The gales were getting stronger and stronger. Flaming tongues started to leap out of the encirclement. Thick smoke billowed and blotted out the sky. The soldiers on guard were shedding tears from all the smoke, and thick layers of clouds appeared in the sky. Fujian's intuition that had been honed through hundreds of battles and his experiences of braving through fire and water warned him like a fire alarm. Dispatch more men leeward. Fujian ordered decisively, immediately. But issuing this order was still too late on the west side of the encirclement, the first gap appeared leeward. Flames began spreading from the living corpses to the soldiers on guard. Imperial guards, listen to my command. Fujian was clad in a golden battle armor. He flipped onto a horse and shouted, follow Zhen and set out. The people on the other side of the river bank watched the scene in horror, and a disturbance started to stir. The encirclement had been broken through, the gap was getting bigger and bigger. Living corpses, enveloped in flames and the stench of being burnt, charged toward the river bank. Once they crossed the river, all of the remaining people of Chang'an would die there. People began escaping in a panic, and this action triggered an even more serious disturbance. Fujian could no longer care for his people, if they lost this battle, then he could only abandon his people and the capital, and flee with the army. His prestige as an emperor would vanish from the face of the earth, and he was bound to become the joke of the whole world. But right at that moment, everyone seemed to realize something. Someone began shouting, and everyone raised their heads and started looking around. Great Chanyu! The Great Chanyu is back! In the distance, from the direction of Chang'an City, a clear whistle could be heard. More than 2,000 people gathered in front of a huge wooden bridge of Zayashui. At this moment, it was as if they had all received an order at the same time as they rode their horses out. Xiang Shu led the vanguard on a horse and by his side was Chen Xing who was riding on a horse as well. Chen Xing spurred his heart lamp, and its intense light shone brightly, the resentment that shrouded the plains of Zayashui dispersed when it met the light, and the living corpses were driven back into the encirclement once again. Sixteen tribes, listen to my orders Xiang Shu shouted in the Tile language, guard Afang Palace. Former Hu subordinates that had been forced to move to the south and warriors who had been neglected by Fujian all voiced their agreement in unison. They turned their horses around and followed Xiang Shu. Even among the Xianbei people, there were a lot of people who responded unconsciously and also held up their weapons. Murong Chui was instantly furious and shouted, Keep your positions. Feng Kinjun's mount galloped swiftly, he swung his Senluo saber out, 
and its black light burst out, and countless pitch black vines sprang out of the ground. They reinforced the encirclement and trapped all of the living corpses that were on fire. Xiang Shu carried his huge sword on his back and rushed over on his horse. Within just a mere thousand steps, he had already assembled a team. Fu Jian looked into the distance and saw that Tuaba Yan had returned too. Imperial Guards Tuaba Yan wielded a halberd in hand while controlling the reins in another. He shouted, Stand with me in battle, guard his majesty. Protect Chang'an. The two reinforcement troops joined the battle. An encirclement took shape again, but the burning living corpses started fleeing west. They pounded fiercely against the siege and knocked a gap through once again. Tuaba Yan led the Imperial Guards and exerted his utmost to resist them, as long as they endured it for this short moment, they would win. Fu Jian roared, they've all been set on fire. Retreat. No. Xiang Shu turned his horse around and roared angrily, if the drought fiends enter the river, the Zhao River will be poisoned. Who will take responsibility then? The catapults released their last wave of kerosene. The raging flames began spreading again under the fierce gales. While the Qin army confronted their enemies, innumerable soldiers were burned to death and scratched by the drought fiends. The Murong family suffered the greatest losses, and they looked to be on the verge of a crushing defeat. The earth was in an upheaval. Then, another batch of reinforcements arrived. Report Governor of Pingyang, Murong Chong has arrived. Within the blink of an eye, thousands of troops charged over from the eastern horizon, backlit by the sun. There were 100,000 cavalrymen dressed in battle armor that glistened in the sunlight, the young martial general in the lead wore a cloak as crimson as sunset clouds that fluttered in the wind. He led the Pingyang armored cavalry and charged into the enemy's ranks without a word. Feng Guang Er. Fu Jian shouted. The living corpses that were breaking through the west side were once again pushed back into the encirclement. At that moment, Xiang Shu held his heavy sword high and shouted, Charge with me. The sixteen Hu tribes let out a roar that shook the heavens, they followed Xiang Shu to launch their first round of assault and charged into the flaming battlefield. Burning living corpses were instantly smashed into pieces, and this action immediately led to wave after wave of large assault battle arrays formed by the Qin army. The Murong family's army, the Imperial Guards under Fu Jian, the guards led by the generals of Great Qin, and even Murong Chang's Pingyang army relied on their armored cavalry that rushed toward the living corpses and trampled all over them wildly. The earth shook. The Qin army was like a tide that crushed them over and over again as if they were venting their frustrations. It was Chen Xing's first time seeing such a scene. The sun had risen, and the clouds dispersed. At this moment, the 300,000 living corpses finally vanished, they were made of dust, and to dust they returned as they crumbled into ash that scattered throughout the plains of Zayahi. They returned to the earth to nourish new life on this land, contributing to the flourishing of life there. It was finally quiet. A gust of wind blew on the plains that curled up countless black embers that swirled into the sky. Xiang Shu reassembled his team on an open space beside the river bank. Chen Xing felt so exhausted that he wanted to just lay down on the ground, but just as he was about to do so, Xiang Shu said, Don't get off your house. Chen Xing smelled the scent of danger. Sure enough, trouble came. After all the living corpses were cleared, the army of Pingyang and the Murong clan began gathering around them. A martial general walked out, took off his silver helmet, and threw it onto the ground, revealing his handsome face. Yet the sixteen Hu tribes behind Xiang Shu weren't the slightest bit afraid. Both groups stood facing each other from far away, separated by a shoal. Murong Chang's black hair fell uttered in the wind. His Xi'an Bay skin was as white as milk from his face to his neck, and his eyes were like amber soaked in water. Chen Xing almost thought that he was a beautiful female general at first sight. Both sides fell silent. Xiang Shu sheathed his sword and carried it on his back. His martial robe was in tatters, and his body was riddled with wounds. 
The large army behind Murong Chong was both orderly and disciplined not even the whinnies of their horses could be heard, and they looked were looking at the other side quietly just like that. Murong Chong spoke, his voice was very gentle, yet it possessed a cold and stern quality. I've long heard of the great Chanyu's outstanding martial skills that are unrivaled in the world, Murong Chong slowly said, you are known as the enemy of all armies. I just wonder how you would fare against my 100,000 cavalrymen. Chen Xing thought Xiang Shu wouldn't answer at first, yet Xiang Shu twirled the reins of his horse around his hands twice and didn't even spare Murong Chong a glance as he said indifferently, ever since entering the pass, I haven't fought an army of over 10,000 men unarmed before, so I don't know yet. Are you sure you want to fight today? Murong Chong replied, it's not a question of whether I want to fight, instead I'll have to ask the great Chanyu if the Murong family has ever offended the great Chanyu before. Whether it be an attempt to kill or dismember, please enlighten me. Xiang Shu raised an eyebrow and finally glanced at Murong Chong, never. Murong Chong said angrily, then why did you kill my Ji? The Murong clan began shouting one after another with utmost indignation. Murong Chui stood out from the ranks and said aloud, Great Chan Yu, ever since the ancient Qi Le Covenant, the Murong clan has never dared to blaspheme the covenant we pledged our allegiance to with blood. Now that the disaster has been averted, you should give us an explanation B.A. Xiang Shu didn't answer and just frowned slightly. Chen Xin did want to explain what had happened, but they didn't have any evidence in hand, and they didn't have any clues as to who the Lord Feng Qinyi spoke of was either. At this time, even if they had spared Feng Qinyi's life for him to talk and get him to confront the Murong family, the other side would definitely not admit that Princess King he had participated in the conspiracy and would just accuse him of framing her. Otherwise, the Murong clan would be deemed guilty by association as well. How could Fujian ignore a family that was plotting a rebellion against him? Murong Chong. Fujian finally came forward and entered the field. Listen to me. Murong Chong's gaze shifted and remained on Fujian for a brief moment but very quickly returned onto Xiang Shu. He was full of doubt as he studied Chen Xing, who was beside Xiang Shu. Shula Kong, Fujian said to Xiang Shu, where's the evidence? Xiang Shu answered coldly, no evidence. You should know best who's right and wrong. Fujian. Fujian took a deep breath and resisted the urge to go forward and hack Xiang Shu to death. Wang Zi rushed over as well on a horse and slowly said, The governor of Pingyang has traveled for a long time to get here. Why don't you report back to Afang Palace first, and later? Go. Xiang Shu shouted decisively. Everyone retreated one after another. Great Chan Yu, I'll seek your advice here today. Murong Chong obviously didn't want to let Xiang Shu go. With an order, the 100,000 troops behind him opened up into a charging formation, they actually wanted to rely on their advantage in military strength to kill Xiang Shu on the spot and take revenge for Princess King He. Who dares to move? Fujian roared angrily. Xiang Shu didn't say another word. He turned his horse around and charged out of the encirclement. A deputy general knocked an arrow on his bow, yet he was struck off his horse by Xiang Shu's sword. The entire army erupted in an uproar immediately. Murong Chong was furious, his army formed a heavy siege as they chased after Xiang Shu. Chen Xing spurred his horse to follow along. The ground quaked violently in an instant, and the gigantic Pingyang army began to speed up as they launched their surprise attack. However, another group of cavalrymen instantly charged in during this interval. All of them dismounted one after another with their shields and spears raised up as they faced the 100,000 Pingyang armored cavalry. Tuaba Yan took the lead and charged through his camp on this horse and shouted, Imperial Guards, obey my orders. Kill anyone who dares disobey the Imperial Decree. Murong Chong roared angrily, Tuaba Yan. You traitor. Seeing as how the imperial guards of the Pingyang army had a clear barrier between them, Murong Chong wasn't willing to challenge Fujian's authority again no matter what, so he could only throw his weapon onto the ground hatefully. 
Xiang Shu had already galloped away from the west bank of Zayahi and passed the huge wooden bridge. With the sound of a crisp whistle, people everywhere below Afang Palace got up one after another and looked toward the direction in which the former sixteen Hu subordinates were leaving. Even more young people from Chang'an ran down the hill, flipped onto a horse, and chased after Xiang Shu. Smoke and dust billowed. Under the eyes of nearly 600,000 Chang'an soldiers, Xiang Shu led thousands of soldiers and civilians to leave just like that, leaving a trail of dust in their wake. Jian Tiou. You're on your own, we'll meet again someday. Fu Jian's gaze seemed conflicted as he watched Xiang Shu take his subordinates to gallop onto the official road and leave Chang'an. Hu've struck the ground heavily on the official road, then they turned into the wilderness. In the height of summer, the sun shone brightly, the grass grew tall and aureoles soared through the sky. After they left Chang'an, clear skies for 10,000 miles could be seen in a flash, as if the azure sky had just been bathed. Chen Xin looked back at the large troop behind that stirred up a billowing trail of dust, the old 16 Hu warriors were first, then it was the younger generation of the Hu people who were following Xiang Shu. Close to 6,000 people converged into a torrent that gushed out of Guanlong like a magnificent tide as they headed north. What are we doing? Chen Xin spurred his horse and asked Xiang Shu, who was riding side by side with him. Xiang Shu didn't answer. He glanced at Chen Xin and deliberately slowed his horse down. Chang'an doesn't welcome us, don't you get that? Xiang Shu said calmly. Chen Xin asked again, then where are we going now? Xiang Shu answered, we're going home. Going home. Chen Xin was baffled. Qi Li Chuan. A warrior reminded Chen Xin in Chinese. The Han language. Xiang Shu's clear voice rang out. Qi Li Chuan under the Yin Mountains. As soon as the song started, it immediately brought with it the vigorous overtone of lofty mountains and vast grasslands. The sky resembles an arched hut a bunch of Hu people followed behind Xiang Shu and Chen Xin as they sang aloud, covering the whole plain. Chen Xin was instantly struck by this song. The Xianbei dialect was originally a clear and elegant one, yet Xiang Shu sang in such an imposing manner that it sounded like an eagle crying out into the vast skies. The crowd sang in unison. The sky is so vast and blue, the wilderness is boundless too. When the winds blow, the grass bends low, cattle and sheep will show. Chia. Xiang Shu spurred his horse and barreled away on his horse. Chen Xin rushed to catch up on his horse. The official road was perfectly straight as it led to the lofty and imposing pass in the north, and it led to the Great Wall under the imposing pass. The boundless sea of grass on their way to the Great Wall blanketed the sky and earth. The extensive ranges of sacred mountains stretched out on the way out of the Great Wall. The huge pond of Hulunbir glistened like gems, and the shimmering rivers appeared like jade belts. At the end of the Divine Land where the arched hut covered the desolation, where the vast skies were blue and the wilderness was boundless too, there was naturally an expansive world there. Volume 1 Senluo Wangziang End